Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a video on the banned list updates. I wasn't actually planning on doing a video on this until next week, but they sped up when they're releasing uh, information about bans, which is generally a good thing. But this is a crazy announcement. There are lots of cards banned that are going to shake up two different formats, standard and modern. Why is Wizards doing this? They've said, we decided to make the changes for the health of the format. That's why Wizards should make bans. But in this particular case, they banned a bunch of cards. And in Modern, it was needed. Modern as a format, because it doesn't have force of will, it doesn't have a controlling way to really shut down combos, needs to keep the format really in check or crazy things happen. And I still think there's some crazy stuff going on in modern. Standard though, we are seeing more bands in standard now than we've seen in years. And I would have liked to have seen in this super short press release, a little bit of an apology to the players because standard is expensive. It is a gateway format to playing Magic for years to come. And when you have your favorite deck banned, it really, really hurts. Lots of people quit playing right after bans because they feel like they've been betrayed. And banning three cards in standard, which is what we see here, is a giant change to the format. Was that change needed? At least one of these cards, I'm going to argue, definitely needed to be banned. The other two, I can see their reasons behind it, but I think they actually banned the wrong card in one of these cases and may have to do more bans. Bans are not good for fans. They're good for formats when they're done strategically, and I'm generally in favor of keeping formats healthy. But this is a lot of bans in a very short period of time, and I understand why people are up in arms and really angry over three standard bans, even if at least one of those was really, really needed. The one that was really needed was Smuggler's Copter. This card is crazy. It's getting played in almost everything. It was very difficult to remove. They have some removal in the new set that is clearly targeted at it, but not enough. It's warping the environment. This card will likely find a home somewhere in Modern or in Legacy where it will continue to do crazy stuff. I like the card a lot but it is clearly overpowered for standard and standard did not have enough reasonable answers to it it had warped the format i'm really sorry for the people who really loved this vehicles are still going to be great there's a lot of options for vehicles but getting rid of this one vehicle was the best choice wizards has made here Emmercool, the promised n this is a crazy card that is a finisher in a lot of decks but i don't think it's actually the best card in some of those decks. Etherworks Marvel can pull out awesome stuff, including Emmercool, but there's other options like Ulamog. This card is powerful and it's depressing to play against because you lose basically a turn, although you do get a turn after that, but you lose all the good cards that you had at that point and you can't remove it with traditional removal if you've got any creatures on the board your sorcery removal isn't going to be able to remove it it's a very difficult non-interactive card one of the few things that keeps emmercool the original one in check in legacy is caracas the ability to pop it back to somebody's hand for free Otherwise, if that card wasn't out there, I could see tossing the original Emmercool from Legacy because it's just a nightmare to play against the same way that this is. Wizards should look at the design philosophy with cards like this. Creating something really powerful is great, but there must be adequate answers. And in this case, we're missing adequate answers. So I slightly understand this banning, but I think it could have been avoided with a little bit different design philosophy. And I'm not sure it's even the most over the top card in the Etherworks Marvel decks or other decks that try to cheat it out. As a finisher for control, it's not the type of finisher I like to see, but I understand that it works in those decks and is extremely powerful. I would have been okay with it staying in the environment, but this should have been avoided altogether. Reflector Mage, oh my God! 
what happened here? This card is a very powerful card. It is one of my absolute favorite cards to come out. It is very annoying to play against. It's like playing against a counterspell that says you can't do cool stuff like that in the future. Really good card. I believe they weren't actually targeting the mage. They're worried about the Shahili feldar combo, the combo cat, and the planeswalker with infinite kitties. And what can we do to try to nerf that deck before that deck takes over? I don't think this is actually going to help, though. It's going to be a minor setback for that deck. But the combo here is just so powerful. I think we're going to see another banning here in the next six months to a year, which is going to make everybody in Standard really unhappy who invested in this deck. I'm actually avoiding these cards at this point. As with any of the cards getting banned, they're all going to drop. There is one card on this list for bands that I'm actually going to recommend picking up uh, long term after it settles down. But Shahili and the Combo Cat, I would even avoid those at this point. There's a lot of speculation going on there. And the Reflector Mage does hit the Flash deck, but the Flash deck really wasn't a huge problem in the environment. And if you wanted to really harm that deck, I would have looked at other cards in that deck. I thought that this band announcement was going to hit the Combo Cat. That Combo Cat would go out before it had even made the ability to destroy Standard. I was wrong on this entirely, and this is what I'm watching in the future. I like the design behind the Reflector Mage, and I think there's an opportunity to possibly even play this card in Modern. Once it drops to little to nothing, I'm going to pick up some foils and experiment with it in Red, White, Blue Control in Modern and see how it works out. Three Toughness is a little bit rough. Maybe I'm being a little too optimistic here. Lightning Bolt is a real card in Modern. Gagari Grave Troll, we're on to Modern at this point. I understand why this has went. Dredge is a miserable deck to play against. It attacks on an entirely different axis. And Wizards has been adding cards that make Dredge better and make Dredge better. Dredge is still going to be a really good deck without the Grave Troll. It's a little sad to see a card unbanned, jump really high in value, and then get banned again, but it was needed. The different access that the Grave Troll and Dredge decks attack on mean that when this deck is too powerful, you must add a giant number of cards to your sideboard. And the problem is, is that there are so many slightly to completely broken decks in Modern that sideboard hate is absolutely needed to take them out that you can't deal with all of them. You're just playing this kind of Russian roulette game where I've got enough answers for robots and I've got enough answers for dredge, but other decks I can't answer at all, like Infect. The Grave Troll needed to go. I don't feel too bad that Wizards tried to bring the Grave Troll back and then banned it. Does really make fans unhappy. And Modern is still a rather broken format. Broken in that there are some super powerful decks that if I wanted to qualify for the Pro Tour, I'd be studying Modern, playing Modern, trying to find the most broken deck and playing at GPs to get on the Pro Tour. The second card that they've removed is one of my absolute favorites. I've recommended people buy this card for a long time. I feel a little bit bad in that I know a lot of people have picked up this card because of my recommendation. And I wouldn't liquidate them. They've already dropped in price. They are a wonderful card in every single format. Vintage, Legacy, Kitchen Table, EDH. This card is super powerful. It's Gataxian Pro. It played in three different decks. It ignores color restrictions. You can have a red-green deck or a solid green deck and still play Gataxian Pro. You can have a black-red deck and still play Gataxian Pro. This card is crazy overpowered, and it did need to go. It's going to slow down the combo kills with Become Immense. It is going to slow down the Death Shadows decks. It's going to kill the Kiln Fiend decks, or at least slow them down significantly. This was a banning that was needed. But this is also a card that I'm saying 
don't count out long term. Long term, this is a great card, and I would be looking at foils, promos, and especially foreign foils for people who are still going to use it in Legacy. They're going to use it in Vintage. They're going to use it in their competitive commander decks. The card is that good. Give it a few months for the price to completely bottom out to nothing, and then pick these up because it is still a really good card. With the bannings in Modern, I feel different about them than the standard bannings. In Standard, you're really harming these brand new players who have really invested everything that they've got in order to come up with a competitive deck, and they're usually really new to the format or possibly Pro Tour long-term grinders. In Modern, though, almost everybody who plays Modern has been in the game for a while, and if we want this to be a competitive GP-level environment, we do need to shake it up. And what Wizards should do is try to avoid bans in Standard. If they're needed like the Copter, I completely understand, and it's going to happen with Combo Cat, too, is my guess. But in Modern, they should actually let people know that we're going to be shaking up this format on a continual basis. But when it comes to modern, in order to keep the format healthy, the card pool is going to have to change and letting people know that maybe we can cut down on some of the speculation that's going on in modern overall, try to bring down the price of it if people know that the market is going to be less stable as they're going to continually change it up to keep it interesting, to keep it fun, and to keep it away from being entirely dominated by certain overpowered decks. They added another announcement here, which is that they're going to do bannings more often. They tried to say that bannings will not actually increase. They just want the opportunity to respond faster. In theory, I'm okay with this, but if we see a change from very few bannings, which we've had in the past, to bannings, especially on standard cards, every few months, that's going to be really unhealthy for Magic overall. Wizards, please use your banning power very limitedly. Pay attention to how much it really hurts standard and hurts new players when you ban cards. Be careful with this new rule. I'm not a fan of it. I understand that it's needed, but it could be really abused and harm the game overall. For further readings about the bannings, the best article out there that I found was Seth Banfield's Big Changes in Modern and Standard Reacting to the Bans. Two of the ideas that I put into this video came directly out of reading his article. Really, really well done. It's over at TCG Player. I'm interested in doing a video on why an older card was banned. What old card would you like to see a video on? Uh, explaining like a historical deck and why it was banned, what the genesis of that was, whether it should still be banned today. Something from legacy, vintage, maybe even modern. Although I did a video over all the modern band cards a while back, so maybe even something later, one of the original um, cards that were banned in the first few years. What would be most interesting to you? For the best tech, even when it's painful, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel, and thank you to Chess.com as a sponsor of the channel. I'm going to be doing more videos this year than I have ever done in the past. A lot of them are going to be done while I am traveling also. I'm going to be posting a schedule of my travel um, up on a new website for Mythic MTG Tech, so watch. That's going to be launched here in the next month or so. Um, if you've got an opportunity to play magic with me while out and about, um, please message me. If I am in your city, I'm happy to meet at a local game store and get some games in. Uh, thank you to everybody who supports the channel, and until next time, choose your cards wisely.